Almighty God, we ask you to look with mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, 
who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. Come, let us free of the sea. For your presence, let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you will find nothing. I am purposed. With regard to the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the wild. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who do me violence, Though he close their hearts to pity, with their mouths they see their As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. In my faith, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He delivered him over to them to be crucified, and he went out bearing his own cross. Give 
hear to my prayer, O God. And hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and I am lonely. Because of the noise of the enemy. Because of the oppression of the wicked. For they drop trouble upon me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me. And horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would rather wander away. I would fly to the wilderness. I would hurry to find a shelter. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan. And you hear my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage. For many are against me. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. My servant makes many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All the day I hold out for you. For my sides are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and crushed. I know because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is before you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. And the light of my eyes falls as a from my My friends and companions stand aloof from my plague. And my bitter sin stands far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. I have become like a man who does not hear. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will do this. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me. O Lord of my salvation.
my servant makes many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been My eyes are ever toward the Lord. Turn to me and be gracious to me. For I am only and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider how many are my foes. And with what violent nature they hate me. O oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me. Redeem Israel, O God. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never, that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Answer me when I call. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and see the death of the wise? But now that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself, the Lord hears when I call to him. You have put more joy in my heart. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me well in
we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid up on him the iniquity of us all. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who, whose it shall be. This was to fill, fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lot. So the soldiers did these things. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame in your righteousness and liberty. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Hear God the refuge for me. O Son of Fortress, save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, lead me in triumph. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me. 
into your hand I commit my spirit. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in you in distress. For my life is spent with sorrow, my years with sighing. Because of my adversaries, I have become a reproach. And an object of dread to my acquaintances. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side. As if it seemed together against me, as if they are day by night. But I trust in you, O Lord. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what, they, what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our message this evening is Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. When he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we ask, by your Spirit's power, open our hearts, open our minds, open our souls. Bring us the certainty of our salvation in the pain, the suffering, the agony our Savior endured on our behalf. Help him. Help him to communicate to each and every of us, one of us, the gift that he has given out of deepest love, out of greatest affection. He holds us dearly in his heart and shows us the depth of that love by the sacrifice on his cross. In his name we pray. Amen. Pain, suffering, wounds. Wounds that cause agony. Wounds that bring bloodshed. Wounds that are deep. Wounds that mean a great deal. I want us to think about everything that we see in how the world deals with pain. How the world deals with pain is not the way our Savior would deal with pain. The world deals with pain in a much different way. As you turn on the news and you watch, we see how the world dealing with pain handles it. We see shootings, shootings in Georgia, shootings in Colorado, shootings in Los Angeles. We turn on the news and we watch a trial, the trial of a police officer accused of killing a man. The world wants to deal with pain. The world wants to deal with suffering. The world wants to deal with death on basis of law, on basis of trying to bring justice through law or trying to pass laws in order to prevent pain. And so what we see is a world that doesn't really get it. Law didn't work in the first covenant. Law didn't work because there's always going to be one problem. And that one problem is sin. Sin is the problem. And law can't handle it. Law can't deal with it. Law can't remove it. And because law can't remove it, all kinds of ways in trying to rid us of sin by law will never work. We'll never work, we'll never remove the pain, we'll never remove the suffering, we'll never stop death. Laws say, take away the guns, like that's going to stop anything. You take them away, I guarantee you, they'll find another way. And here's the problem. We live in a world that thinks this is wise. We live in a world that thinks this is enlightened. It's never going to be fixed. Not in this world. Not by law. But with every pain, there's a scar. Whether it's a scar of the body, whether it's a scar of the mind, or whether it's a scar of the heart. And we might say, well, scars fade in time. And that may be true of bodily scars. But it is usually not true of mental scars and emotional scars. Those are the scars that last, that linger, because those scars are embedded in memory. 
And as they are embedded in memory, they don't go away. As those memories, difficult, painful, agonizing, and therefore linger. Linger in great suffering. Lin linger in emotion. Linger in grief. And as they linger, so the pain goes on. So how is it really solved? as we look on the cross, particularly on a crucifix. And many of us as Lutherans normally don't see crucifix because we think, well, that's a Roman Catholic thing. Mm -mm. It is a Christian thing. It is a Christian thing because we all need to be reminded of Christ on that cross. Because Christ on that cross is the reminder of the wounds that he suffered. Listen to Isaiah's words again. See them on the screen. Recognize what God has done for us. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. See, every wound that Jesus faced before the cross and on the cross is God's way of dealing with the sin issue. God's way of dealing with the sin problem. We walk through the passion. Jesus was arrested, slapped, beaten with fists, spit on. A reed was taken and he was wrapped on the head with it. A crown of thorns was pushed into his skull. He was whipped and flogged, mocked and taken to the cross, bearing the great weight of the wooden beam that he would be nailed to, the nails piercing his hands and his feet, and in a final degradation of his body, a spear plunged into his side. Blood was shed. Blood was shed to redeem. Blood was shed to take the sin problem away. To take it in every wound, in every beating, in every way, all that degradation heaped on himself to remove sin from us, to absorb it out of our lives, and to deal with it once and for all. And so now, now there's a solution. Now there begins to be a healing. Read the last phrase on the screen with me. With his stripes, we are healed. Because now Jesus is bringing the gift of forgiveness of sins. And through that gift of forgiveness, then those wounds in us, both physical, mental, and emotional wounds, begin to heal. But they only begin in this world. They only begin in this world because there will always be that lasting memory as long as we are on earth. But God has an ultimate and eternal plan. And that ultimate and eternal plan means that all of those sins taken away means all of those scars will be completely healed. No vision, no memory, no agonizing grief ever and evermore because of what our Savior did. Because of his gift. Because of his suffering. With his stripes we are healed. For in heaven, for eternity, every scar, both a body mind and heart are removed, completely erased, with the exception of the ones on Jesus. And the ones on Jesus remain to remind us of the love that he has for us, an eternal love, a complete love, an absolute love, an unconditional love. 
the unconditional love that heals us once and for all by the shedding of his blood. And with his stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he, had already, he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. Preserve me, O God. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also loves to bear. For you shall not abandon my soul to Sheol. Or let my holy one see corruption. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And your right hand are pleasures Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one make many to be accounted righteous. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud.
God is our refuge and strength. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. The Lord of hosts is with us. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. ask you to look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. <laughs> 